for the Quantum Grammar Show podcast, the only podcast of its kind on the internet that I'm aware of. I'm your host, Colin Jason I from Matthew Colin Glass. You may call me Jason in this podcast. I will be sharing with you what I call correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, psychology, which I feel is necessary to have a grasp of in order to be successful if you're going to use the grammar technology known as correct sentence structure communication parsi syntax grammar which was brought to the public in 1988 by the late colin david iphone and colin miller yes you must learn the grammar first you must have a foundation a solid foundation of grammar and be able to give closure to all of the things that you do on your document contract postal vessel court venues. Once you've done that, now you have to learn how to navigate through the now space using correct sentence structure, using those principles that underlie what you have put on the paper. Now there are those folks out there who think that Correct sentence structure is something to be wielded like a baseball bat. That they think correctness is some sort of weapon that's just going to smash all the wrong out there. Which is basically not true. Now keep in mind, folks, I'm using plain, simple English to speak here. And when I use terms, I'm using the modern um, communal meanings of these words. What you would normally, the meaning of them that you would normally take if you're having a conversation with anyone, anywhere, in a department store, in a restaurant, wherever. Those are the meanings I use. If I mean something different, I will tell you. I'm not one of these folks that all of a sudden cherry pick out of a conversation, well, receipt means no seat. Deposit means no posit. I'm not one of those people. All right, that that's for the basic, uh, what you would call correct sentence structure, maybe elementary school people or junior high people. That's childish. To me, from my perception, that's just childish. Uh, I'm in a different domain when I'm teaching this. I'm teaching this to hopefully more serious folks who are here to do adult things rather than act like immature, temperamental, uh, junior high kids. All right, now that that's out of the way, what I'm going to talk about today is going into battle. Because there are times, if you do plan on using this grammar, that you are going to go into battle. Of course, there's going to be nitpickers out there that are going to say, Oh, oh, he, he, he said go into battle. That, that's fighting. That's, that's not peaceful or neutral. Oh. Well, again, junior high mentality. Immature. Meaning not mature. From my perspective. Because if you navigate with the maintenance of rule one, rule equal, the balance of honor and grace, and the position of peace and neutrality as your terms and conditions in general of your, you know, contracts in everyday life, well, what if one or two or even all three of those are violated during the course of contracting? Well, what happens then? In other words, if you're walking down the street and someone just comes up from behind you and just tries to whack you with a baseball bat, what happens then? Are you going to still be peaceful and neutral and stop and be like, hey, man, calm down, dude. Chill out, bro. It's casual. I'm not going to fight you. And you turn your other cheek and let him smack that one too with the baseball bat. Is that what you're going to do? I mean, because, I mean, it's your choice if that's how you want to do it. But that's definitely not how I'm going to do it. Because if someone comes at me with a baseball bat, then those terms and conditions are off the table now. They avoided that contract. They avoided it because they have violated the terms and conditions. And so therefore, 
I can do whatever I need to do to maintain or to reestablish the peace that I'm cultivating and the neutrality that I'm cultivating. So if that means taking the baseball bat away from the assailant and beating them down to a place where they can no longer move and no longer threaten me, then that's what I'm going to do. That's exactly what I'm going to do, and it's probably going to happen in five seconds if I had to put a number on it. So that's what I'm talking about here. Preparing to go into battle, because you are going. it's going to happen. Even if your volition is not to do that, it's going to happen if you're going to use this. So how do you cultivate that type of mentality? Well, you do it through training. It's just like anybody who's training for, you know, martial arts, training for a fight, or just training for every day just to have enough skill in their tool belt, still skill in their, in their toolbox to have a confidence that if they're walking down the street and they are physically threatened, they and their family are, are physically threatened by something, that they can handle it. They're not afraid because they know that they know how to fight. They know how to handle themselves. They know how to use whatever armaments they may have or be carrying for protection. Then they know how to do it safely. They don't go overboard. They only use what is necessary. And in certain situations, they do use force continuum to nullify a threat which is exactly how correct sentence structure works. For example, if I'm being bureaucratically trespassed upon and I'm sustaining damage or potential damage and any, as they say, reasonable individual, mature individual can see that this type, this type of damage is going to happen, then I have to take steps to stop that trespass if I don't want this quote-unquote shipwreck to occur. So, if I'm going to send out one letter, like if I get something through um, my mailbox that I construe as a bureaucratic threat, meaning someone trying to rip me off, then I create a document contract postal vessel court venue using correct sentence structure, using all those mechanics, which you can find in my many classes, creating a document contract postal vessel court venue. Use all those mechanics and then send it out. But the language that I use, the terminology, I guess, would be more accurate that I would use, would be not, depending upon the threat, it, if it's just like something that I don't construe as overly threatening, <laughs> I would use something like, well, you're using a uh, fictitious conveyance of grammar. I would use the word fictitious rather than the word fraud would be one example. The first letter. If that's all it takes and the threat goes away, goes on vacation, then it worked. They don't bother me again. But if it doesn't work and they send a second letter, then I up it. Then maybe I say fraud fraudulent conveyance of grammar, which is stronger. This is force continuum. And then maybe a third letter comes, then I really bring down the hammer and start using words like harassment and things like that. Which, I don't think I've ever had to send more than three letters to stop a trespass. Normally it just takes one. For me, anyways. So it's the same thing in a physical confrontation. I mean, you see these videos all the time on YouTube of these, again, young kids getting into physical confrontations, and then when one of the combatants are clearly unconscious on the pavement, the other combatant continues to strike the downed combatant in the head, kicking them, punching them, whatever, which is completely uncalled for and completely unnecessary. That is not force continuum. That's over the top. That's wrong. That's crime. That's criminal to do something like that. Unless your volition is to make sure that they're not drawing breath anymore and they're no longer 
going to be a participant in the conscious domain, which, I mean, that's up to you, your choice, if that's how you want to do things, if that's how you uh, navigate. And there are scenarios where that might be appropriate, uh, just depending. Especially if they tried to do the same thing to you. Okay, but in most cases, these videos on YouTube are these kids that are just pounding on somebody else unnecessarily. That's not how I navigate. And that's the analogy I'm trying to draw with you is that if I'm in a physical... Con so theoretically, if I was in a physical confrontation with somebody and if all it takes is one good left hook to the chin and they're down and then they put their hand up and say, okay, I'm done, then, then it's done. I'm not going to do anything else physically to them. I'm going to make sure that they're not lying, of course. Um, uh, but maybe, maybe they might get a soccer kick just for good measure, just to see. Uh, you know, but it might be in the chest or something rather than the head. Just to make sure, to put some punctuation on it. But I'm not going to try and cripple them. I'm not going to try and uh, maim them or mangle them. It's force continuum. You do what is necessary to stop the threat, and then you stop. That's it. That's the way I navigate. Using correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. That's how I choose the language that I use in a, uh, a document. For example, when I voided my contracts with the military... I didn't even use the term fictitious conveyance of grammar or um, fraudulent conveyance of grammar or anything like that because I don't have anything against the military. I'm not anti-military at all in the sense that I do agree that you have to have some sort of plan on standby to defend your family your community, however you want to say it. I agree with that thought process. The part I don't agree with are the thought processes that involve getting involved in um, creating wars for profit, to create jobs, to steal land. That's the part I don't agree with and don't participate with. So when I say I don't participate with anyone with a war like volition, that is what I mean. It doesn't mean I'm anti-military. Anti-militia, no. It means that I'm anti-military for what I perceive to be the wrong reasons. Anyways, so when I vacated those contracts... I basically said, using correct sentence structure, I basically said that from my perception, I felt I was coerced into um, going down to the post office and signing up for selective service because of the threatening letters they sent. and think, Not threatening letters, but ominous letters that they would send saying it's your duty to sign up when you're 18. Keep in mind, folks, this is all part of the birth certificate system. That uh, It's all part of the birth certificate system that ropes you into the fictitious court system, the foreign vessels and dry dock. The birth certificate being that bill of the lading that really has nothing to do with you. It's implied that it has something to do with you. It's assumed. You've always probably assumed that it has something to do with you. But you had no part in that. That was between the foundling hospital or another entity and your parent, your mother. Or your guardian or whom, whomever signed it. So it's all tied into that. So what I did was I just wrote a letter saying that um, I would be more than happy to help out with the safeguard of my family, my community. And then I gave the terms and conditions under which I would do that. And I, I do believe, I if this was years ago, but I do believe I went into a whole thing of uh, 
not, you know, land grabbing, not destroying other cultures, killing children, killing women, killing old men, non-combatants, um, not doing it for profit, not getting involved in things that had nothing to do with my community or the country that I'm assumed to be uh, in, uh, residing within. So things like that. All right. So I wasn't refusing to be a fighter. I was refusing, I was not refusing any of that. I was offering to help, but under certain terms and conditions, because all of contract is by consent. And I certainly did not consent to be owned by a government, which is what happens when you do join the military. You are no longer the owner or steward of your body. They are, or your mind, they are. So that, that's uh, how I handled that, if any of that makes sense to you. <laughs> I hope I, and I don't mean that, uh, what I mean by that is, I hope I explained it clearly. So this all has to do with the topic of going into battle and being prepared for it. If your volition is to, as uh the Christians say, turn the other cheek. Then what does that mean for you? Does that mean to, if someone, punch, you know, beat you down, let them continue beating you and then do whatever they want to do? Um, Because that doesn't make much sense to me, folks. And that's why I say that religion is just another control mechanism to get you to be docile, do what the hell you're told, suffer, in this domain so that you can live happily ever after in some imaginary other domain after you leave this one. Which to me is complete and utter bullshit. But hey, to each their own. So now I think I've come full circle. I think I've explained myself enough as far as this stuff goes that perhaps the nitpickers will find much less to nitpick about when they talk about peace and neutrality. Oh yeah, what was the other thing? Challenges. Someone was trying to say that it's not peaceful and neutral to issue a challenge. Which tells me that, again, to go back to the junior high analogy, that they're definitely, with very, very little correct sentence structure, psychology, psychological knowledge. Which means they've never really probably ever used this in a real life scenario, in a practical everyday scenario. So they're one of the individuals that maybe have a good grasp, rudimentary grasp on the grammar, but they have no idea how to use it or how to navigate successfully with it. They're speaking again from a theoretical standpoint. That's why it's always good. You know, I mean, you can, I've used this analogy before too. You can read all the books you want to about learning how to swim. Every book in existence. Learn every single technique, breathing technique, every single stroke, everything. But until you get in the water, you're never going to know if you actually know how to swim. And the more you do it, the better you get at it. It's not something that magically appears when you're thrown in the deep end. It's like these folks that think that, and hopefully YouTube won't flag this, but I'm going to use the G word, or maybe I'll use the F word. Folks that think that just because they carry a firearm, they're safe. But that if someone actually thinks that, that just because they carry a firearm and that's all they have to do, they're safe, then they probably don't know how to fight. Because to me, if someone's carrying a firearm and they don't know how to fight, then they've basically given their enemy, their potential enemy, a weapon. That gun can be taken away from you very easily. 
Because once you get in a close quarters physical confrontation, which is usually what happens if you're in a parking lot or something, and someone just jumps you as you're trying to, you know, you're in a vulnerable position getting in your car. If someone acts, jumps you, one or two people, two would be horrible. What are you doing right away? You're struggling to get to your gun. So if someone as an assailant sees that you're struggling to get to your gun, now their focal point is going to be getting to your gun. And so you now you got two or three people struggling to get to a gun. And chances are, they're probably going to get it away from you. Probably. And then what? And then what happens? Have you trained rep, uh, weapon retention? Probably not. That's why I much prefer a blade. Because in close quarters, if someone's coming for me, I can easily extricate the blade from the, from the sheath and they ain't going to try and get it from me. Because if you even look at that thing too closely, it's going to cut you. And before you know it, there's going to be blood everywhere and that usually freaks people out and they will stop. So these are things like, like if you, but if you don't train in knife fighting, then you're not going to be able to magically have that skill appear when you're being assaulted at 10 o'clock in the local Kroger parking lot. Learning how to fight is not magically going to materialize. Like I know you have these stories of, oh, you know, don't mess with mama bear, so on and so forth. Well, if mama bear isn't, taking a self-defense course isn't learning how to punch and kick and and sprawl and brawl and maybe a little jujitsu and grappling if, if she's not doing that then she doesn't know how to fight and while she may have herculean strength or whatever it's not going to nullify the attack of a fully grown mentally unbalanced assailant hopped up on methamphetamine i don't care how much of a bear she is It's not going to work. You have to train. You have to practice. And it's no different with correct sentence structure. You have to put yourself in these scenarios. And now I'm not saying do something dangerous or stupid that's going to put you in prison. There are scenarios you can do safely where it's a bloody nose you can handle if you do get a bloody nose. And it's not going to mess with you. And it's just a learning experience. And then again, you can escalate these things as the trespasses come or, or, you know, unfortunately or unfortunately, if they do or they don't, you'll be able to handle them because you'll get more experience, more and more experience and up your challenge the more you go. But just because someone issues a challenge doesn't mean they're warlike, doesn't mean it's avoidance of peace and neutrality. Challenges can be fun. I challenge myself every day with different things. It doesn't mean I'm not peaceful or neutral. I challenge somebody to a game of rock, paper, scissors. Am I suddenly not peaceful and neutral anymore? Goodness gracious. Oof. Some people hold me to such a high standard. Darn it. Golly gee willikers. All right. I've yapped along enough. This is quite the yap fest. Hope you enjoyed it. Um... Hopefully I'll be getting back into some more in-depth video content in the coming months. More grammar content. As you know, I haven't really been able to put out regular content, but I'm doing the best I can. Hope you appreciate it. Hope you enjoy it. Hope you learn from it. And stay tuned for a message after this as to how you can apply for correct sentence structure workshops through me. Thank you.